Hello friends, welcome to Creator King. It's already 6.17 in the morning and this lazy guy won't get up. Wake up, sleepyhead. That's why it takes years to upload videos. To create this effective Squid Game themed alarm clock, we obviously need an alarm clock. Any brand and quality will work as long as it does what it's supposed to. We'll have to manipulate its interior, so the first thing will be to remove the screws and open it to see its insides. Bring your kit of small specialty screwdrivers and choose the one with the perfect size. You can also add a magnet to make it easier to remove those mini screws. My life hack works like a charm. They call me Magneto because I attract pure iron. My life is so sad. With the help of a pair of tweezers like the ones your mom uses to remove her ingrown toenails, delicately open the fine timepiece and borrow its motor. Disconnect the wires by melting the solder and insert them through one side of the screw holes. Use the tweezers to pull them out of the other side. Close the alarm clock again and insert only one screw on the side without the wires using the same little magnet trick. Once it's tightly closed, we will no longer need these screwdrivers, so you can remove the magnet and put them back in your toolbox until the next time I come up with another one of these ingenious inventions. Let's leave the poor clock alone for a moment while we make the launching mechanism for the alarm projectiles. For this, we'll need to make a small central hole in the center of two caps using a hot soldering iron. Once we have both caps ready, put them aside and get a piece of mechanical engineering that will apply rotational energy or a double pivot toy motor. Proceed to do a functionality test by connecting the snap to the battery. Next, apply glue to the pins and attach the pierced caps. Place one on the side you prefer and pour tons of hot glue on it to prevent them from coming apart. Repeat the previous steps with the opposite side and test how well they rotate. They look like sports car tires. With a permanent marker, make a couple of lines on the side of each cab, like you see on the screen. Then look for the thinnest drill bit among your gadgets and make holes in the lids. While I'm mercilessly drilling the caps, why don't you tell me what you think about the channel? I mean, I know it's great, but I'd like to hear you say it. Don't forget to drill the backs, as we'll have to go through both holes with a few pieces of galvanized wire like this one. Cut the necessary pieces with a pair of pliers. Don't try to cut it with anything else. I tried with a pair of scissors and it didn't budge. Put the wire through both holes, testing that they turn perfectly. With sturdy pliers, bend one end of each wire backwards and the other forwards so that they make this Z shape that will forcefully launch the projectiles. After cutting off the excess wire, fill each hole with hot glue to make sure they don't move. I'd keep my fingers away from those spinning blades if I were you. We're not done with this piece yet, but let's put it aside momentarily while we prepare what will be the elongated cockpit of our launcher. Remove one of the sticks from the Christmas nativity scene at your school. Speaking of nativity scenes, at my university they used to have a gigantic one, almost life-size. They invested more in that than in our academics. After exposing the lack of logic of my dear university, let's take the necessary pieces to assemble the mini rotary saw we need. It looks quite dangerous and intimidating. Can you imagine a horror movie where the bad guy has one of these? I would run in terror. With it, we'll cut the piece that we've marked so that it's the perfect size. Hot glue the stick on top of the motor with the rotating blades. We're going to add yet another object, so apply some super glue over the entire length of the wood and recycle the straw from your milkshake. I bet not even the most advanced defense technologies look this beautiful. We'll need another wooden stick with the diameter similar to that of the straw. Mark this one about 11 centimeters. Put the ruler away again and cut the stick in half with our deadly saw. It has to be a totally clean cut. 
take out the permanent marker again and mark a small point as close as possible to the end that we cut. Create a small hole with the mini drill. <coughs> Too much sawdust for my taste. Clean your work area with compressed air. After squeezing glue into the hole, insert a nail and pass the stick through the inside of the straw until it is completely aligned with the wood underneath. Get a pointed stick like those used for fondue and cut off the excess with cutting tweezers. Glue the thin stick to the rectangular piece of wood and get a box of rubber bands. Delicately take one of them and attach it from the thin stick to the nail making sure that it's tense enough to make this movement with the necessary strength. Buy lots and lots of popsicle sticks, as it would be insanity to eat as many popsicles for all the sticks we'll need. Glue the first one on the side, placing it in line with the front of the toy engine. We'll do the same on the opposite side. You don't expect me to explain the same thing again, do you? It's not like you're in kindergarten. We better sing in the meantime. Do you guys know Baby Shark? Take a new popsicle stick out of the pile and measure it with the ruler. Make a mark at 3.5 centimeters before cutting it with the well-known cutting pliers. Use this small piece of wood to replicate the measurement of the rest of the stick, then multiply it by 2. Or 4 because 2 times 2 equals 4. Basic mathematics. Take the structure again and apply instant glue as shown on the screen in order to glue one of the pieces of wood to it. Also glue another one towards the back, and then replicate it on the opposite side. These will be the supports that hold the Annie Sweet Dreams projectile. That Creator King doesn't even know what awaits him. Place the last of the supports and then reinforce them with even more popsicle sticks. Believe it or not, I'm also sick of so many wooden sticks, but they turn out to be a good material, resistant and cheap. One has to adapt or sink. Turn the frame over and place a popsicle stick on the motor to help you measure the length of the structure. Mark the line and cut the piece with scissors. Glue the shortest part to the back end with super glue and the delicate help of a pair of tweezers. Once attached, fuse the longer part of the motor making sure it touches the small back part forming a perfect 90 degree angle. Mark the groove where the projectiles will fall before being launched one by one and cut it with a sharp object like this beautiful box cutter. Remove the part we don't need and proceed to take another popsicle stick, of course. Remove one of the rounded ends of this popsicle stick using pliers and repeat the process three more times so that there are four in total. Place glue on the straw at the four corners of the cut we made as a slot for the projectiles and attach each stick. I've already made a log launcher on this channel, which had a defensive purpose instead of these awakening qualities. Every object has more than one use if you get a little creative. Join these four popsicle sticks with another flat piece of wood which we'll first measure. Mark and cut before attaching it with our well-known super glue. I do a lot of free publicity for both this glue and Coca-Cola. I should start charging them per mention. Do the same on the opposite side and reinforce the narrow ends with a wide piece of wood. Add two more popsicle sticks inside the projectile compartment to prevent them from slipping out of place prematurely. I am relieved to report that we are done with the popsicle sticks and that we can now move on to the electric system which I find much more exciting these days. Let's use a can of my favorite fried food as a container for all the circuits and a base to hold the angry squid game doll and its projectile alarm clock. After enjoying its contents, clean the container perfectly with a little soapy water and a cloth or a piece of toilet paper. Place it upside down and with the help of a ruler, mark a cross to indicate where to make the hole. To create it, we'll use a nail and a hammer, but you could also use a drill or, I don't know, anything sharp. Place the round plastic cap on the base and create a hole with the soldering iron directly on top of the first hole. Get a small toy motor that is a little different than most and apply glue to the side with the pivot to insert it into the holes. 
put more glue on the inside to make sure it doesn't slip out of place, then call the police to steal their remote control unit. Ironic, isn't it? Stealing the circuit from them? I barely understand myself. After connecting the wires, find a piece of wood with the width of a broomstick and measure it using the launching structure. With the handsaw, cut the piece we just measured and repeat the process to obtain two of them. Join them to the base, turning them into the supports of the launcher. Obviously, you have to glue it on top. It looks so good like this that I'm about to leave it as a remote-controlled defense system. But the initial idea was more original. Place a weight inside the can to prevent it from moving or falling over and a series of magnets to hold it in place. Put the batteries in the tight space left inside the can and move on to the creation of the projectiles. They could have been made from a softer material, but the King is such a heavy sleeper that it would feel like a tickle. So the best solution is to leave a mark. All the projectiles will be sanded on one side to give them a more aerodynamic look, and when they are ready, we'll paint them to give them a little design. I will use blue and orange to give it a Nerf dart look, but you can paint them any theme you want. It would also be nice to paint them like Pikachu to wake up with a thunder shock. Did you see how beautiful it came out? I'm a naturally gifted artist. Once we have them all, introduce them into the special compartment we built. Launcher loaded. Add a wide stick with rubber bands on top of the projectiles to generate pressure. Then paint the pieces of the clock white as a base color and then add the green which will match perfectly with the ugly doll. While I relax painting and reassembling the clock, let's talk one last time. In this video, of course, don't get sentimental, there's still plenty of Creator King for you. Are you guys like me who set alarms 30 minutes starting at 6 a.m. because you have to get up at 8 a.m.? Or are you one of those blessed by the Creator who can get up early without any difficulty? And with all the good vibes in the world, because that's a whole nother thing. If you talk to me when I just get up, I will probably respond by throwing the nearest object to you, like this scary doll that we'll place as an ornament on top of our launcher. Oh, Creator King, soon you'll stop having sweet dreams. <laughs> to finish, connect the wires from the clock to the launcher delicately. It's time to test how effective our new alarm clock is. I hope you get the joke. With the clock in place, Creator King can comfortably go to sleep without worrying about getting up tomorrow because the Squid Game alarm clock will do it for him. It doesn't matter if he stayed up late playing games, watching Netflix, or recording and editing videos for you. Because with this invention, he will never wake up at 6.17 in the morning. Ha 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 ha! You don't know how much I will enjoy watching this. Good morning! Wake up! You have to upload this video now! How nice! Your workers are staying up all night to get the script ready and you're asleep. Aren't you ashamed? Get up now! Or do you want to be pummeled again by a rain of wooden projectiles? That's what I thought. Thanks for watching our inventions made out of household items today. Follow my channel if you'd like to learn more about making simple yet incredible inventions. Also, click on the link to see more videos about my amazing inventions. Click on the link to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of my videos. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial.